Hey, this is Stacy from Let's Cook, y'all. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new, welcome. We're so glad you're here. We hope you enjoy the content on our channel and you'll consider hitting that red subscribe button. We have got a veritable smorgasbord for you guys this week. We've got one recipe that we transformed into something different for leftovers. We've got a new side dish, a new Instant Pot main dish, a little taste test, and a tip and trick at the end. A little bit of everything. We hope you enjoy the video. First up this week, I started by prepping some carrots and some potatoes. This is something probably everybody knows how to make and we love, but for whatever reason, I don't tend to make it very often. I found some chuck roast at Kroger on sale a month or two ago and put a couple of them in the freezer and looked at different things to make with them and then I asked him and he said, I do love roast. So I got it ready. I make roast pretty much like my mama taught me. I use dry onion soup mix, some cream of mushroom soup, a whole lot of seasonings, some garlic powder, onion powder, some Mrs. Dash um, garlic herb, and a whole bunch of salt and pepper. I do both sides of the meat really well. This is the only chance you get to flavor the meat. And besides the onion soup mix and the cream of mushroom, the other thing my mom always taught me to do, and she said it was to tenderize the beef, is I use Coke or Coca-Cola. I think any soda would work. It's like an acid. It helps tenderize the beef, and it makes the most delicious gravy that you can imagine. I know there's a lot of debate. Do you put the meat on the bottom, the meat on the top, the vegetables on the top of the bottom? But again, the way my mom always taught me is I put the vegetables on the top, salt and pepper them really well again. I, I think potatoes love salt and pepper. Put it on the crock pot high for four hours or low all day. To go along with our roast, I made a quick salad and I had a couple of yeast rolls left over out in the freezer. Got those out. And I know it's gonna fog it up because it's been cooking. Yep, fog up the lens. I love using my crock pot, especially in the fall. But I tell you what, it is torture smelling this thing all day long while it cooks. So I'm gonna let it cool a little bit, cut us some off, fix our plates. I'll show you a quick picture or bowls. I may do mine in a bowl. It's got a lot of good gravy. Roast with veggies, salad and rolls is what's for dinner tonight. For tonight's dinner, I'm going to mix up a sauce, actually a stir-fry sauce. I checked my recipe. I first made this in 2004 and I've adapted it a little. It was originally a Weight Watchers recipe. It has chicken broth, oyster sauce, sake or rice wine, but I do substitute rice wine vinegar. It also needs some soy sauce, which I use liquid aminos and some cornstarch. And since I did use the vinegar, I sweeten it up a little bit with a, a honey or an agave. For the main course, I pulled out of my freezer one of these big boxes of General Tso's chicken that I like to do in the air fryer. I cook them on 370 for about 14 minutes. Alexa, set an air fryer timer for seven minutes. But the stir fry sauce is to go on the vegetables. The original Weight Watcher recipe was for a broccoli with garlic, but I had some onions and some baby bella portobello mushrooms, so I chopped all those up. I got my wok hot and added some avocado oil and then started layering in my vegetables. Put in the broccoli first because Tim's not overly fond of crisp or tender crisp broccoli and then the little slivers of onion and the last thing I put in, oh I did need a little bit more oil I thought and the last thing I put in is the mushrooms because they cook the quickest. I did add some more minced garlic and I think I meant to add some ginger, that might have been the second one. I do like both garlic and ginger. And lastly, the stir fry sauce that we mixed up with the oyster sauce in it. Once the chicken pieces cook, either in the oven or in my case the air fryer, I split them up and use um, most of the sauce from the general sauce for Tim and I use this sweet chili sauce for me. Homemade Chinese buffet, white rice in the rice cooker for Tim, brown rice and quinoa for me, some stir fried uh, broccoli with a garlic sauce that I also threw in some onions and mushrooms because I had them and Tim says, good, good, Just with a little bit of oyster sauce to make them thicker. From the big box from Sam, some General Tso's, 
Also from a big box from Sam, some edamame. And I kept a few pieces of the chicken out that I will toss with the sweet hot chili sauce for me. So we're, we'll make our plates from the little buffet, show you a quick picture. That's what's for dinner tonight. It's time to take that leftover roast and turn it into something else. Thank you to our subscriber Donna Gribbins for giving me the idea in a recent comment. We are going to chip up the beef and start making a vegetable soup that I'll add the meat to. I started off by making three cups of beef broth using water and better than bouillon. I added a can of tomato sauce and then I took some water and swished it around to get all of it out and thin it out just a little bit more. I added some seasonings like onion powder, garlic powder, this Trader Joe's mushroom umami that I'm still working on trying to use, some of my favorite Mrs. Dash garlic and herb seasoning, some salt and pepper, and then we added in the chipped beef. My mother-in-law makes great vegetable soup. She puts in a lot of corn and a lot of green beans, and Tim likes both of those, so I got some out of the freezer and added it. It's probably been two or three years since we've shown vegetable soup. If you remember, which most people probably won't, Tim has an oddity when he eats vegetable soup. He likes a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I, however, am in charge of the cooking and I decided to take a box of Jiffy cornmeal mix and mix up some little cornmeal muffins. I have been doing more and more in my air fryer and I've discovered using these little silicone, silicone muffin cups that I do in the air fryer. It only takes 12 minutes from start to finish to make these in the air fryer. Once my vegetable soup is about ready, I'll take the carrots and the potatoes that I've done in the crock pot since they're already cooked. I chopped them up fairly small. They just need to heat through, so I'll add them at the end till everything is heated. So someone's hungry for the vegetable soup waiting on the muffins to come out of the air fryer. What did you just tell me before I turned the camera on? Uh, I'm hungry. Oh. <laughs> I'm hungry. I was gonna say, I don't remember what I did. I know you don't. So vegetable soup with a little roast and I'll show you the muffins when they come out of the air fryer. They'll be slung, misshapen. We could care less, they taste the same and they're cooked in about half the time. So let's check on those. Corn muffins are ready. Oh, they're gonna be hot and they're slung. Hot vegetable soup with a little leftover roast. That's what's for dinner tonight. I'm starting to feel a little bit like fall around here. I'll be ready for soup season. I tried a new recipe this week. I'm slowly working my way through my one or two thousand recipes that I have pinned at Pinterest to try. This is one from Six Sister Stuff for an Instant Pot Creamy Shells and Beef, except that I used ground turkey instead of beef, but other than that, I pretty much followed the recipe, and I will leave a link to that below. The first thing we're going to do is get the Instant Pot on saute mode to start sauteing the meat and some chopped up onion. I always like to get my pan hot. That's why I always show you guys where I put my hand over it to feel the heat before I add the olive oil, but the pan was hot. I added the oil till it was shimmering or rippling, and then I started adding the onions. I did not have to leave out bell pepper. This recipe actually didn't call for it. And then you add the beef, or in my case, the ground turkey. Get it all sauteed up. The recipe says to brown the ground beef and then take it out and drain it. Turkey, thankfully, does not have as much grease and fat as ground beef. I've already done this once. I thought I had my camera on. I just take my tongs and a paper towel and try to get most of the grease and moisture out. And then we will add the rest of the ingredients. And when I showed you everything, I did leave out tomato paste. So we will add the seasonings and the tomato paste next. I added the one tablespoon of Italian seasoning that the recipe did call for. And then since I used turkey instead of beef, I added some steak seasoning to beef it up a little bit the one teaspoon of garlic powder that the recipe calls for, the half a teaspoon each of salt and pepper, and then the tablespoon of tomato paste from a tube. I love this stuff. I keep it in my refrigerator. We're gonna mix all that up really well. And I always add extra seasonings when I cook in the Instant Pot, so I added some onion powder, some white pepper, and some more of this Trader Joe's mushroom umami that I'm still figuring out how to use. 
The meat is browned and seasoned, so we pour in the shell pasta and then a 24 ounce jar of pasta sauce. The recipe was very specific. You don't stir the pasta sauce in the water, but I always like to try to cover as much of the pasta as I can. I don't want dry, crunchy pieces. So you pour the sauce and then you pour the water. You don't stir, you don't mix. And I did try, like I said, I tried to get everything below some liquid. We're gonna seal it up and set it to cook for five minutes. Give or take a few minutes to start and stop the stopwatch. It looks like it took it a little over 17 minutes to come to pressure and we will cook for five and then do a quick release. Safety disclaimer, Instant Pot will tell you never to cover the vent with a towel, but I always have and I've never had a problem. Once the pressure fully releases, then the pin will drop, which is what I was pointing at, and it is safe to open. I took my spatula and stirred it around to make sure everything was cooked and wasn't stuck. It's time to add the other two ingredients. I took four ounces of softened cream cheese and I did cut it up into smaller pieces. I think it helps it melt and incorporate. Then you add one cup of grated or shredded Parmesan cheese, and we will incorporate that. One thing I really liked about this recipe, as opposed to some of the others I saw on Pinterest, is this one used a cup of half and half rather than heavy cream, which I preferred. I added a little bit to start with, and then the rest of it to stir it up, and that makes it creamy. A new recipe in the Instant Pot for creamy shells and beef. We will plate this up. We've got salad and green beans to go with it. Fix our plates and show you a quick picture. That's what's for dinner tonight. A quick note about this recipe. It was good and I would make it again, except if I ever make this one again, I would definitely cut it in either half or maybe even a quarter. Uh, for the two of us, it just made way too much. We gave some away and we still had leftovers for days, but it was good. It'd probably be much better with beef than turkey because it is called creamy shells and beef, but we gave it two thumbs up. It's feeling and looking like fall around here. So we are breaking out the grill. Everything for dinner tonight is going on the grill. We've got sauerkraut. We're going to put on, Tim doesn't even know what we got, brats and hot dogs. Yeehaw! I'm excited. It feels great out here. It's an October feast to me. Those are the new, the mixing flavors. Those are the new street taco. So they're Mexican-y flavor to go with our October fast food. How are they? Give me one. They're good, they're just different. They're like Mexican-y, they're like pork taco. I don't know what they are. Pork taco. Does that work with the bratwurst? What do you think? They're different. We got the giant Sam size bag. They're so good. They just, I don't, they're just, I don't know if they're going to work with. They're unique. I don't know if they're going to work with brats. Not bad. It may work with bratwurst. I was expecting something Mexican ish. I could have done the hot dog. I probably could have done the brats in the air fryer, but. Such a beautiful day and you were willing to grill. Thank you, by the way. Let's need a little longer. I just turned them over not long ago, so. Yeah, but they're red in the middle still. Take a little time to brown. They're spitting and spewing. I don't know if you can see. Thank you to my very sweet husband for cooking all of our dinner. The beer bratwurst, the hot dogs, the sauerkraut out on the grill. Got some chips on the side. I've got some grapes. I'll show you a quick picture. An Oktoberfest feast is what's for dinner in our house tonight. I 
have a mango and normally I take my knife and go on either side of the big pit that's in the middle and then try to cut away. I normally like make a pattern in here and try to cut it out, but I was watching a show on the Food Channel. Golly, I don't remember how they did it. Yeah, maybe I need a bigger glass. They somehow went down in the glass and it came out. All right, I'm gonna get a bigger glass and try. I wonder if they had to start it somehow. This is going really well. Okay, I was gonna get a bigger glass. I think I figured out what it is. I made like a little start here. So I've got it so I can get it around the lip. And I'm so not coordinated and Tim's not here. And then you just kind of go like that. And I didn't do a very good job, but maybe I can do it again. Get it started. And it's backwards for y'all. And you kind of run it down like that. Anyway, it may not work as well, but at least I don't have to crisscross it. I'm gonna try the other half. That's not bad. It's a big piece and a lot of juice. I can drink the juice. That one did better. Cool. A new way to cut a mango. Thanks so much for stopping by. Have a wonderful and truly blessed day, y'all.